So, welcome back again. We're going to pick up on where we left off before the holidays and before Gretel got sick, which put a damper on the series that I was doing because I had two holiday mushrooms to share with you. So, we're going to catch up on those. We are going to do number six and number seven. Might be in two parts, but here you can see this is where we left off. We did the first five. This one you were supposed to do yourself using the red as a base, but doing a chocolate coating. Now, I will do that one with the chocolate coating in the very end, but that was mushroom number five. So we're going to do six and seven today, which, of course, would have been fitting for the holiday season, which is an elf and a Santa Claus. So that's what we're going to do. Here is some of the tools that you will need. A straight edge, whether it's a ruler or another style of straight edge. An eraser, doesn't matter what kind, just, just in case you make mistakes. A pencil, uh, graphite, or a number two. Either will work as long as you remember, don't do a really heavy line. And then the colors we are going to use really quick is going to be Colors number 109, number 914, 1094, 1084, your white, 912, going to use 909, going to use your 989, your black. 941, this one is 289, which is your gray-green light, and let's get the number off here for you, which is 908, which is your dark green. Now, we may not use every single color here, but these are the color choices I have played with, and for the best result of the elf, and I also used a white gel pen and a gold sparkle gel pen. So whatever gold or sparkle gel pen you wanna use, or you can just use colored pencil, it doesn't matter. The preferred method that I'm gonna show you is with the Jelly Roll white gel pens. Now I have number five and number eight, which is um, a finer point and a medium point. There's also a 10. 10 you can use as well instead of an 8, but the 5 you're going to maybe want to try to use. It works better when you're trying to create a fine line, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that fine line in the very end. So, you can also use your Posca white acrylic paint pens. Those will work as well. So, let's get started here. Push this off to the side really quick. Make my little mess. Try not to bump the camera and keep you in view. So I'm gonna push this up and out of the way. I have to be at an angle, so I hope you can still see this. We're gonna do the elf. Now what I'm gonna do, as you can see in this picture, the elf here, this was just a rough draft, and the Santa. So we're gonna cre create belts and a center line. Don't jump ahead because I've changed the way I've done the Santa one. Anyways, I'm going to show you how to do this belt and the little feet. And if you don't already have this mushroom printout, this is from Color with Claire's Kofi page. Again, that's where I usually get a lot of my prints to use in these videos. And it's free, so you can go on there and download it and print it out and try some of these mushrooms or create your own. That's half the fun, right? So you're gonna take your straight edge and you're gonna create your belt. So it doesn't have to be perfect because my, my lines never are. Don't press real hard, you're just gonna do a light line. Create two straight lines. 
Oops, see, mine's never perfect either. That's why you have the eraser. You don't wanna make the waist belt too wide. Mine are never perfectly straight. And then I'm gonna make the center line here. Doesn't have to be perfectly centered. So I'm just doing two little lines. And don't worry if they're not perfect. When you start coloring, you're gonna cover up that um, pencil mark anyway. So it'll be okay. Now to do the belt, the square, I just took my pencil and right above it, drew a straight line and a straight line below it and then made a square in the center. And then if you have a nice fine little eraser, that works really good. You can erase the inner line from where you drew your belt. And that's a little too high right here. So I'm gonna adjust my line. So there, it looks more like a belt buckle. There we go. So it gives it more of that belt buckle look. So we're not gonna fill that in right away. The very first thing we are going to do though is put a really light coat of your white right down this center strip. Don't press down real heavy, just do a really light coating. Don't do the buckle, but do the center, that little tiny square you put in the center. And the reason we're doing this is because we're gonna work with some dark colors. You wanna try to keep as much of the dark out of that center line as you can. And believe it or not, by putting a light coat of your white, it's easier to erase than it is if that darker color gets into your paper first. So we're gonna start by taking um, color 109 and we're gonna come down here to the base. Just like in my previous videos, we're gonna start the majority with the darker color. We're gonna follow the contours of this mushroom and I'm just drawing a straight line, not pressing hard, really light. I'm gonna come back over it here in a second. And the reason I'm doing it this way is so I don't get this dark green into that bottom fleshy part of the mushroom. Okay, now really light circles, small light layer. I'm gonna put that base color, that darker shading that you would see at the bottom of the mushroom. I'm just adding that here. Just a really light layer. Doesn't have to be fancy. Don't worry if it gets too wide. It won't impact the overall look on your end result. I always say don't try to make anything too perfect. Because the harder you try, the less satisfied you'll be with your outcome. Now I'm keeping these very simple. So these are our really basic level blending. Anybody can do this. As long as you keep your touch light, you'll do just fine. But it's also great practice for working with your Prismacolor pencils. Okay. So now the next color we're gonna take, of course, is our dark green. And we are just gonna do the same thing following that same line, but we're gonna go right over that bottom color in small circles. And what we're doing by keeping it light is we're pulling some of that color upward. So you should have just a little bit darker base when your finished product is complete, you'll see that dark line at the bottom. And it helps to give you some better shading when you do this. 
And sometimes if you get just the right amount of color, you won't have to come back and put any dark shades in there. Again, you can see I'm just working my way up with this color, going over that bottom color, paying attention around the belt here because that's where you're gonna see some darker colors. And don't worry about filling in those little mushroom dots, go for it. And again, on the other side here, going around the edge of that belt, I'm just going over my line and bringing it up. And I'm still keeping, again, a very light touch. I'm not burnishing my paper and I'm not pressing down hard at all. So if you guys need to zoom in, remember that you can um, zoom in on your videos just like you would a picture. So just pinch and squeeze to zoom in and out. Okay, I'm gonna go back over this. And don't worry, we will go back over each and every color before we finalize this mushroom. So that's where the really good blending gets in there, is when you do your final coloring and you get a good burnish in there. Okay, my next color is going to be that grass green. And we're not gonna come all the way down with the grass green, but we're just gonna grab the edge of that dark green and we're blending upward, pulling some of that dark green into the grass green and blending it out. Again, still using a light touch. Don't get too heavy. The goal is to be able to blend a seamless line and blend your colors. And even if it's not looking good right now, it will as you continue to work your colors. Now, don't forget you drew that belt in there, so don't go over your belt. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side of the belt. Keeping simple, small circles, light pressure. It takes longer when you do it this way, but you get really good results. Okay, now you're gonna still keep your grass green because you're gonna come up above the belt and you're just gonna go around the edges of the belt here. Really light in your corners because that's where you're gonna see some darker colors is where the fabric is touching something for example, a belt where the light can't quite get in there. It's gonna bring a little up at the corner and you're gonna do the same on the other side. And we're just gonna bring this over with a really light, thin line and bring it around the edge of that belt Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because you really will modify this as you do your final layers. Okay, now your next color is going to be your 912, your apple green. And again, it's going just right at the edge, but not all the way down into that grass green. And you're just pulling some of that up, working the darker on the outer edge and you're just gonna keep pulling it up, grabbing it, pulling it up, grabbing it and pulling it up. When you do that, it blends that line. Okay, and you're gonna do it on the same side, the opposite side, the same thing. And again, it does not have to be perfect You don't have to keep your line straight because it doesn't need to be. And just go right over those little warts, mushroom warts. 
I'm just gonna bring this up here. Now with this green, I'm gonna come up along the edge of the belt just a little bit and on the same side, uh, the opposite side, same thing. Okay. Now my next color is my 989, my bright chartreuse. Now I'm gonna bring this color up, grabbing the edge of 912 and blending upward. Grabbing the edges along where we highlighted the dark. And you can see how it comes together there. And still, I'm just light pressure. I'm not doing a heavy coat here. Not yet. And do the other side the exact same way. Grab that edge of that 912, small circles, and pull it up. So you're kind of feathering upward. And along the edge of that center piece, Okay, so now you have your base coat down. This is an outline of what you are going to do when you lay your colors out. This is how I like to work. It gives me an idea of where each of my colors is gonna go. And at this point, you can manipulate your colors, whether you want more dark, more medium, or more light green. So we're gonna stop right there just for a minute because I want you to jump down here to your your base and I want to show you how to put those little legs in or the feet all I did was I kind of picked like a a center point midway and I drew like a half an arch right there I don't know if you could see that right in here and then I slightly angled it going downward going both ways almost like a V, an upside down V. And then to create the little shoe, I just made a half moon shape. And since that's covered, you only need the one shoe. But you can make this line thin, you can make it wide. So it makes it look like it's a little legs. You can do that or you can leave that part out. That's completely up to you. Now, if you want to do the base in a brown or a beige, I've pulled those colors and that's why those colors were set aside. But I want to keep it the same and consistent, so I'm going to do it in the green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this outer edge with my darkest green, which is 109. I'm just doing a light coat. I'm gonna go around this inner thigh area and up around that shoe. Just giving it a nice baseline of where I'm gonna put these colors. Now down where you, the stump meets this smaller one, you can bring that darker color out a little bit because that's gonna be more of your shaded area where the light's not getting it. So you can do a little bit of a wider line here and then in between the blades of grass, you'll wanna get a little bit of a darker layer in there. And you notice this dark green will cover up those pencil lines. So there you have it. Okay, now I'm gonna take my grass, or my, excuse me, my dark green, and I'm gonna go right to the edge, and I'm gonna, small light circles, pull that color outward and blend it together there. Now, this darker area is intentional because again, that's, your light's not really hitting it there, so it's okay to keep that a little bit darker.
and I'm using a light touch again. I'm gonna go around the edge. Okay, so there you have it. Now your grass green. You can do the same thing, working from the edge of the dark. Okay, now my 912, your apple green. Again, keeping with the same pattern. Just around that edge there. Just a really light coat. And now your bright green, your 989. Right down that white strip, except for that little part at the top. Just keep it on the very outer edge here and leave a little white space in the center. I know it seems funny, but there's a reason for it. You're gonna use that, oops, that 989 here. Okay, we'll come back to all this in the end. And again, with your center piece here, take your darker green, and this one, the center chest part, I'm gonna work from the outside in. So just a thin line here. I'm not doing the top or bottom. And I'm gonna repeat that with my same colors I used on the top and on the pants. Working my way inward. And of course you can do these however you like. If you wanna to do top to bottom, north to south, east to west, that's all up to you. Okay, and your bright green here. And that little bit right in the center, just for starters. Okay, so that gives you your basic layout for what it's going to um, look like or where your colors are going to go. The black will be used on the boot, but I'm not gonna put the black down yet. We're gonna hold off because it's a really dark color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back up to my top part, working from top to bottom. That way I'm not rubbing my hand across the bottom of my work. Because even if I do that now, it's fine because I haven't applied a lot of color down there. It kinda helps from I guess rubbing. So if you if you were working on a picture and you start coloring here and you haven't colored this plate side yet, when you color, you're gonna be rubbing across that colored part, which can rub color off. So I try to work from left to right instead of right to left. So in this example, we're gonna work from top to bottom. So I avoid doing that as much as possible. Okay, 
with your darker green, you're going to come in and you're going to, with some medium pressure, you're going to just go over what you did previously. Small circles hitting that baseline, coming around that edge where that black line is. Just going to follow it. Okay. This is where it gets fun. This is where it starts to really come to life. And again, I like to keep these simple so that anybody, even if you're just starting out and learning techniques with colored pencils, you can do something fun and learn how to do fairly simple blending techniques. Because it doesn't require a whole lot of skill. It just requires patience. And I know people get frustrated really easy when it comes to blending. But, you know, you don't have to do blending. If you prefer to just color away, then just color away as long as it makes you happy. You can see Gretel was up here with her claws. There's some little white scratches on my paper. That's going to make for an interesting design. Okay. <clears throat> Now I'm grabbing my dark green. Some medium pressure. This is a really toothy paper I'm using just so everybody knows. Depending on what paper you're using, you're gonna get a little bit of a variation. You see how now those colors are really starting to stand out? And if you need to go back over this a third time or a fourth time, that's fine. Okay, now my grass green again. And I'm just going on the edge with the grass green. I'm not going all the way down like I did with the two dark greens. But I'm doing the small circles here. And I'm pulling that color into each other right at the edge and blending upward. Making sure to get in next to that belt. Again, medium pressure, not heavy pressure. You never want to use heavy pressure with Prismas. They're just too soft. It's all about layering your colors here. Okay. Repeat it on the other side. And again, don't worry if it's not uniform. On each side, it doesn't have to be. These are just fun little whimsical mushrooms if you get bored and want to do some or you want to add something different to your pages there's a lot of mushrooms out there and a lot of artist work so don't be afraid to make your mushrooms into a theme okay so that grass green i'm gonna continue that up here just a little bit like before but I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher. I want a little more of that grass green in the top here. OK. 
Okay, just gonna keep going along the line. You know, Gretel must have been pawing at these papers because I'm hitting all kinds of lineage in my page here. You don't really see it until you start coloring. Somebody's been being sassy. Getting along those edges are kind of tricky. Okay, I'm gonna take my 912. Bringing that up a little bit higher. forget to get along your edge there. Get a good mix of those two colors. You really notice how the colors are starting to come together now. And do that on the other side. And get it right up here first so I don't forget. So as you're blending up, it should get a lighter touch as you're going upward towards the brighter yellow. You don't want to have too sharp of a line there. You won't get a good blend. You can really see those lines where she was up here. She likes to sit on my pictures. I don't know who else has a cat that has that problem. I'm just gonna add a little bit more here. Oh, Gretel. Why'd you have to sit on this one? Okay, I'm gonna take my 989 Again, grabbing that edge. It's a little medium pressure here. Blending right at the line where those two colors are meeting. I'm pulling it upward. I'll probably have to go over this one final time to get that burnished look that I'm after. Okay, now my super light one, my light green gray just right at the top. You're not trying to create white. That's why the first time around you, you went all the way up with your chartreuse. You're just kind of going over it and blending outward. So there you have your second coat of the upper mushroom, the cap. And you can really see how the colors are kind of blending together. For me, because of the type of paper I'm using, I'm gonna have to do another layer on that upper mushroom. But for right now, I'm gonna do some of the belt work with you. So we're gonna start by taking the black 
and I'm going to draw a nice crisp black line just under where the green stopped on the upper and lower. Now your belt can be skinnier, it can be wider. You can skip the belt altogether. I chose to put the belt in because it gives it that distinct um, costume look. And again, I'm not an artist. I usually can't draw for beans. So again, I'm just doing the line. I'm gonna do my center part. And color that in. Just put that nice crisp black color in the center. Okay. Now, if you want, you can take your deep gray, like, um, let me grab it here. So I'll even do that. Your 90% cool gray. You can start by putting a light layer of that down before you put your black in. It'll make your black blacker. You can even use the dark green in place if you don't have the 90% cool gray. Put a light layer of that dark green down, then go over that with your black. It'll really give you a really dark look. And again, on the other side, we're not doing the center part yet because that's going to be white. Unless you want to do it black, you can. Okay. Okay. So it looks kind of gray. Now I'm gonna put a heavy coat. So probably have to do a couple layers. You notice I like a sharp point. So that shows you that I'm not pressing hard at all because these are Prismacolors. If I was being heavy handed, I'd have snapped that tip. And I hear so many people tell me, oh my gosh, my tips break all the time. Stop pressing so hard. Prismacolors are designed to be blended and used with a light hand. And the more you train yourself on your blending and coloring techniques and holding your pencils with a gentle touch, a lot of people hold them way back here to avoid pressing too hard. I do that sometimes and sometimes I get really close to the tip. But that's years of knowing how, how much pressure to apply when I'm coloring. But don't get me wrong, I break tips too. Prismas are just, they're just a soft pencil. But when I use my polys and my luminance, luminance, my Karen Ash, I've broken them as well, so. Oh, here comes Grail, she's gotta bump the table. Nosy Biscuits is up here. All right, now you might have to do a couple layers of the black and that's okay. You can alternate using your black and your dark gray to really get that color popping. But usually I just like to get my layers in and then when I'm burnishing, I can really get that black to shine. She's off to the corner here sniffing my gel pens. She's actually in the upper portion if you can't already see her little fat head sticking in here. There she goes, she's gonna steal my pens. Hey, now we're gonna do the other side. I like to let you guys finish these on your own once I've given you all the basic layout. I want to see some more of your finished mushrooms, though, even if they're not the ones I taught you. I like to see that my tips help people.
And when we when I start doing the forest mushroom, I'm gonna get into a more um, intermediate level of color blending. But it'll still be easy enough where you guys, even entry level, or people who are just learning, even kids, you guys can all accomplish it. It's not gonna be hard. I call it intermediate because we're gonna use a lot more colors and some earth tones, which is a great universal color for doing a lot of your mushrooms. If you don't like to do bright colors or you're just tired of doing the same colors over and over. Okay, so I've done the first layer a light, well, two layers, I guess, the light and medium coat of the dark on the belt. Now, when you look at your center line here, if you notice that there's any green in there, go ahead and take your eraser and just erase it a little bit. Don't press down and do circles. For me, I can see when I erase it, I'm getting some of that chartreuse. And that's okay, because we're going to color, that'll get covered up here. Don't press down it hard and just use small circles when you erase because we're going to work on that little white part and then we're going to work on this underbelly. So once you've done that, take your white pencil, do a medium pressure coat all the way down your belt, skipping that belt buckle. You'll notice here I'm not really using circles. I'm just applying a medium pressure and I'm going all the way down. Don't worry if you can see some of the dark or the pencil marks, that's gonna get covered up, I promise. But this white base coat is important. Okay, now the fun begins. Grab your gel pens. Grab your number eight or your number 10 if you have a wide point and if you ever see me in my videos and I have white gel paint on my hands like this, it's because I have a habit of cleaning my tips off on my hand. It washes off, so what's the big deal? Now, with my gel pen, I'm coming in here and I'm doing dots. I'm just gonna dot the heck out of the inside of this. I'm gonna coat that whole entire center piece with just dots dots and dashes and smudges. Don't worry if it gets really thick. That's why the acrylic paint will work for this too, your Poscas. Pay attention around your belt line here. And just keep going, building up that color and those dots. The dotting, the reason for that is it gives depth. It'll make it look more like fur or snow. It gives it some texture. So then while it's still wet, I'm just kind of tapping it down. Then I'm gonna keep going. Tapping it kind of makes it textury. Is that a word? I'm just gonna keep going and keep going. And you'll notice I'm starting to cover up those dark lines, the pencil lines that we put in earlier. You can still see that dark green shading. Cool, I'm gonna let that dry for a second. I'm gonna do the bottom part. Paying attention around your belt buckle. Dot, 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 dot. Tap. Do some more dots. I'm gonna come up here and do some more. Why that dries. 
And I'm just gonna keep layering up my dots. If they're little like dashes, that's okay too. Dashes, dots, and they don't have to be special, just poking them on there. And you'll notice if you look close on your paper, you'll start to see a little bit of texture starting to pop through by using your white gel pen this way. There's a method to my madness. This is a great technique for creating falling snow, like snow that's just sitting on your branches, is to just put dots, tap it down, then put more dots. It kind of gives it a 3D effect. Come back down here, adding some more. Okay, we're gonna let that dry for a second. While that's drying, I've got my gold. I might as well do my buckle. Take my fancy gold. I decided gold, but you can use silver. You can use whatever color you want for a belt buckle. My elf's getting a gold buckle. Okay, pretty, pretty cool. We're not done with that yet. And I'm, I'll burnish my paper later, but I want to finish this part with you in the boots. So we're not done with this upper part. I'm just waiting a second for it to dry. Good enough. Number five, my finer point gel pen. If you don't have one, that's all right. Sometimes mine get all gummed up. Let's see. Yeah, this one's being misbehaving now. I just used it last night. Grr. Don't you like how my poor little hands get, if Gretel's not cutting me? Yeah, that's really not happy that's better okay that's better all right so with the number five because it's a finer tip i'm dashing my edges outward in out quick little dashes what that's doing is it gives it that fur those really fine hairlines like fur i don't know if you could zoom in and see it they're not showing up yet but they will so keep going and they don't have to be any one specific direction. This pen's gonna give me issues, I feel it. I might switch pens. I'm gonna use my fine point. I'm gonna use this one. It's my Signo fine point. There we go, that's better. I think my jelly roll is just dry. It might be done. So I'm just feathering out some fine lines here. and I'm going in different directions. And you can still tap it down if you want, because you can come back over those little lines. And if you zoom in, as soon as I move my fat little fingers, if you zoom in there, you'll kind of see on the outside, it looks like fuzz. That's the look you're wanting because that gives it kind of a, a fur look. But again, you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. You can skip it. But it's a great little technique. And don't go too heavy, otherwise you'll just end up with a big white blob. Add some more in there. Kind of a fun little technique. Cause like, just for example, let's take this draft mushroom here. Like if I wanted to add some snow, like I could take my better gel pen 
and you just do little dots like that. And you can see it over the red there. like falling snow and then tap it down, let it dry for a second and then add a few more little dots. Your end picture will give you more of a raised up effect when the gel dries. Just so you know. Okay, blah, 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 right? Just ramble, ramble. Okay, move these aside. I'm going to grab why that's drying and doing its thing. I am going to grab my wonderful 1094 Sandbar Brown and for the fleshy underskirt here, I'm doing my corners. Just really light, not heavy. Going around the edge. I'm just putting the edge on there, really light. My corners for the shaded area. Doesn't have to be perfect. And around the bottom here. And my little skirt. Just around the edges, really lightly around these edges. And now it's up to you. If you want to do the skirt and the flesh underneath different, go for it. This is just what I came up with. Okay. You could also do this like fill it in green and then cover it with dots of snow like the snow was falling down on the elf. Okay. Now I'm grabbing my light gray green. And I'm going to fill that whole area in, even going over that sandbar brown. Hopefully you can still see that. I didn't get out of camera, did I? Sometimes I forget to pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm just filling in that whole fleshy part with this light gray green. Again, going right over the sandbar brown that I put in, kind of mixing it together. It gives it just that little bit of white with a, a shaded brown, but still keeping in the green family. It seemed fitting for the elf. And I'll do the same down here. Going right over that sandbar brown. But filling in that whole area with that light gray green. Get a good coat on there. So if you have to do a couple layers, do a couple layers. It's like I missed a little spot there. Okay, now I'm going to take my sandbar brown again and I'm just lightly going over those little lines, really light. You're just highlighting the lines that are there. That's it, that's all you're doing. Just adding a little depth. So it gives it a more fleshy feel. But yet the lines don't look so jet black now. Pretty simple techniques. 
Nothing over the top that anybody can't do. Okay, look at that, how exciting. Now, let the fun begin. Take your fancy black, make your shape of your boot, make sure you leave a little white spot. I'll show you. You know, the shiny toes. My elf has shiny toes. My little spot there in the center as I'm making this boot or the toe look. Nice heavy coat. My boot looks a little weird, but that's okay. I'm gonna take my white right here in the center. Nice white. I'll take my black again to hone in on that so that that shiny part's not too big. Then I will take my broad point white pen, put a little dash. The shoe's easy. I mean, for somebody who can't draw, I can do that. Okay. Now we're gonna jump right in here to 109. Again, I will burnish this later. I'll let you guys finish yours, but we're gonna get the basics done here so that you guys shouldn't have any issues finishing your elfin mushroom, like a Keebler elf. I don't know why I think Keebler elf, Keebler crackers, but I do. Okay, my dark green. Okay. Now my dark green, so 109, then dark green. Blending the two together with small circles, working from the outer edges, so east to west. Now my grass green. I probably won't need to come back over this one because I got a pretty good coat on there. Now my 912, my apple green. You can see how those colors, they all come together and they made that nice blend there. Now my chartreuse right down the center with it. Grabbing the edges of your grass green. Give it a good blend. Now I'm going to take my light gray green and I'm just gonna give it a little highlight right in the center. There you go. Nothing fancy. And we're gonna do the same with the pants. Again, we're gonna follow our same pattern that we laid out before. And now is the time to make changes if that's what you wanna do. Making changes while you're doing your second layer is better than making changes after you've laid down a thick coating. Because, boy, is it really hard to remove Prismacolor pencils. The scotch tape technique is always best.
Because you start erasing Prismacolor pencils, you're just going to ruin paper. Making this line here just a little sharper with my dark green. And this again is 109. Following the edge of his pants, her pants, his pants, mushroom pants. Can mushrooms wear pants? My mushrooms wear pants. Okay. Cool. All right, so we got that. Then your dark green. Then your dark green right over that previous green. You're blending them and pulling them out. Keep your lines tight. And make sure you're doing circles, small circles to blend those colors together. The tooth of the paper will pick that up better if you are working with the grain of the paper. Okay, now my grassy green. You see all the colors are coming out. I'm hoping you guys can see this okay. Get a little more up in that corner there. Okay, my 912, my apple green. Just pulling right on the edge of that previous green here. My pants might need a little work. See, I got a little heavy on the edge with my dark green, so I'm really squeezing in now with my apple green. But that's okay. Don't ever give up even if you make little mistakes like that. It can be remedied. Okay, my bright green here. Grabbing the edges and circling my way up with it, all except for that extreme center piece. Hey, oh, my really light green, my light gray green kind of goes up. I'm going to manipulate this color around a little bit to kind of blend it out. You can see how I moved it around. That's what prismas are good for. You can manipulate that color. Okay, the reason I did it this way is to kind of show the dark and the light contrast. You can do 
very differently if you like. You can work from the bottom up, the top down. You can do dark, light, you know, dark, medium, light all the way up. It's kind of up to you however you want to do that, especially when it comes to working something you've created. So again, when you do your, your final layers on your mushroom, don't forget when you're doing them, you're gonna be burnishing when you start applying medium to heavy pressure. So really make sure when you're laying your colors down that you know where your blending lines are and that that's the final color you want. Because once it's there, it's really hard to remove and you risk ruining the paper once you've burnished it. And you'll know when you've burnished the paper because it'll start getting a, um, a funny peel or pock-like look to the color when you move it around the paper. It'll just start almost blistering the paper off. And that's what you don't want because it'll ruin a really cute picture. But as I said before, I have one more layer to do here of my mushroom to really get that good burnish look to it and fill in all my little gaps. But I'm using a fairly toothy paper here. And of course, trying to fill in those little fancy little kitty cat scratch lines that Gretel left for me because she's good about that stuff. <laughs> little heathen. But... What I want you to do is finish your mushrooms, finish your baby mushrooms, and then feel free to share the pictures either on my YouTube in the comments or send me a message on Facebook with your pictures attached. I am happy to take a look at them and I love to see that people have actually done the, the mushrooms and the artwork. I've only had a couple sent to me. I was hoping for more, but maybe my mushrooms aren't as fun as I thought they would be. But again, do the dotting work with your white gel pens to get that texture. And it's a good technique to practice in creating snow and texture with your snow and making different um, 3D effects. And again, that's just with blotting and applying another coat over that blotting. So I've enjoyed this elf so much. The next one we're going to do is Santa's jumpsuit. So stay tuned for a part two to the Pacific Northwest mushroom series. I look forward to seeing you guys back real soon. We have a few more to do. Have a great night and thanks for watching.